Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, cupcake tutorial, right? In this one, we're going to take a look at texturing and, well, more specifically, texturing by hand, right? Texture painting. To get that started, there is something we need to set up whenever we're going to do some manual texturing, right? Some texture painting, and that is, you guessed it, a UV map, okay? And the UV map may be a little bit annoying to set up. Um, especially if you have no clue what it is and what it does. Um, so let's dive into that a little bit more. Okay, so if you go into edit mode of your object, this is our 3D mesh. This is, this is our topology. And in a UV map, in order to texture something, um, you want to have this 3D mesh as a 2D mesh, pretty much, in order to apply a 2D texture. Right, a 2D texture goes on a 2D topology pretty much. And if we set our right window, if you don't have that open yet, just drag that to the left from there. Go to uh, the UV editor, there we go. And now we can see a nice 2D square here. Um, and in order to see how the topology is mapped to a 2D plane pretty much, we have to select it in our 3D view. And by default, there is no UV map here. And um, to see the name of your UV map, by the way, we can go to our data right there. And we can open the UV map panel. So the default one is always called UV map. Um, so remember that, okay? So in order to unwrap this, we need to first press U in our 3D viewport. Right, U is the button to open up UV mapping options. And there's a lot going on here, a lot you can actually use, right? And every one of these options will have a different outcome. Um, so we can, for example, click on Unwrap and see what it does. And by default, it is actually not too bad at unwrapping this, right? You can see everything is mapped, and if you just select a face in your object, you can see how that is related to the 2D UV map here. And this one on the side as well. And this one, right, you can pretty much select everything and see how it is mapped into your UV maps. Um, we can also use a UV Smart project. And if we just unwrap that one, you can see that it's going to pretty much split up your mesh based on angles. Okay, and you can set that angle yourself at the bottom window on the left. Just move my head for a sec. There we go, beautiful. And we now have an angle limit. And with every angle that we tweak, you can see the UV map changing on the right as well. So that is the smart UV project. Um, let me move back my head. There we go. Beautiful to the corner. Now, in some cases, your UV unwrap will not work properly. <coughs> Excuse me. And if that happens, you need to add manual seams. And you can think of seams like the knitting lines on your clothes, for, for, for example. If you look at your shoulders there, there's going to be like one seam at where your different parts of your clothes are sewn together. Okay, and that is basically because otherwise the shape will be incredibly hard to make out of a 2D object, right? Same thing, for example, for, um, let's say, a box, right? A box um, of cardboard. And um, you basically have a cube in 3D, obviously, right? A cube, something like that. Beautiful, beautiful cube. And if you unwrap that to a 2D um, image, let's say, then you will just unfold this cube, right? Because that is how cubes are made from 2D cardboard planes as well. So if you unwrap that, you get something like, I'm not 100% sure, I think it's something like this. And then you have got the extensions there. Something like that. Don't quote me on this. Um, but you know, if you if you then fold that, you're going to end up with pretty much a cube, right? Um, so that is um something that you can think about. So uh, sound seams or sewing lines, sewing patterns. Not sure what it's called in your clothes or boxes, for example, that you fold into cubes or cubes that you unfold into planes okay so to do that to unfold that you obviously let me actually um you actually need those seams those separation lines pretty much okay and that means for example if you have a sleeve 
on your shirt, right? That is a cylinder. There we go. And if you would have to unwrap this in a 2D plane, right? There is no way to do that without adding like a separation right there, for example. And if you separate this and you cut it right here with like scissors, right? Then you're actually going to end up with, you guessed it, an unrolled tube, which is a plane, right? Think about an A4 paper that you roll up into a cylinder that you can look through. We've, we've been there as kids, right? We roll it up, we look through it, and it looks like we're, we're looking through the, the things that pirates use to spot islands and lands and stuff, you know? Um, so think about that, right? So basically, whenever you're unwrapping something, you're going to think about how you would um, turn it into a 2D image by cutting it up in separate pieces. Okay, so for example, if this wouldn't have unwrapped properly as it, as it did, um, then I would just add a seam, for example, right here, double click or alt click to uh, add an edge loop, right mouse, and to mark seam to um, select edges. You need to be in edge select mode, of course, so press 2 and then double click or alt click. Um, and if you marked it as a seam, you're going to have a red edge. And that red edge is basically that cutting line, right? So if I now press A, U, and unwrap, you can see it's now separating the middle part from that outer part. Now, this, of course, is now a, a cylinder, right? Because we got that nice shape like this. And as I showed you before, that is quite difficult to unwrap, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to add another seam, right? For example, anywhere. I usually try to make it a seam that is not really visible for the camera, um, which means we could just do this like on the back. For example, this line, any line will do pretty much. Any line that's going to split from our initial seam to the top. Um, right there, hold control and then select the end edge, right mouse, mark seam, alt Z, I went into uh, x-ray mode with alt Z. And you can see that if we just disable our subdivision for a sec and our shrink wrap too, you can see that we now have two seams, right? And this seam is going to split the bottom from the sides and this seam is basically going to allow us to unwrap this cylinder as a plane okay so press a again u let me just show this um u unwrap and now you can see that we're actually going to end up with a plane now this not always works out well um well it works but you would expect this to be completely flat right straight like an actual piece of paper um as, but it isn't right and that is something we have to deal with and there's a easy trick to get this to straighten up again okay all we need is one of these quads that is going to be straight okay and how do we do that well it is actually quite easy we just select for example with one a vertex select we select this one and we enable a snapping at the top of there and we set this to be vertex and then we can press g um sorry disable proportional editing if you have that enabled shortcut o g y there we go and then we can just snap that in the y direction to this vertex and g x snap it to this one then set a snap this one g y to that one and g x to that one so this quad is now completely straight and aligned in our grid so press L while hovering over this mesh island, this UV unwrap island, and that will select the entire island, right? And then select your um, the quad that we just um, deformed to a proper square. Select that last. Remember to go into face select, so three, and hold shift and just select that. And then right mouse, and we can now um, click on follow active quads. I'm going to zoom out first. Right mouse, follow active quads, and that's going to align the entire mesh to that quad. And that is quite beautiful, isn't it? And then we could just scale this down, make it fit into our UV map. Um, and that is another thing that we want to do with our UVs. So by default, we're going to have a square that is going to map with an image texture. Okay? And 
by default you want this square to be occupied as much as possible by your surface topology, by your actual 3D topology. And because that is just allowing us to have as much resolution in our texture as possible that is going to be mapped on the mesh. Right, um, so the, the the bigger I make this, the more detail we're gonna be able to get for each of these faces because it's bigger on our actual texture, right? So this is not the ideal shape to unwrap, okay? This is not the ideal shape to unwrap because we have one very long stretched square, pretty much. And that is something that I'm not really interested in right now because it doesn't allow us to scale it up because it will be out of bounds, pretty much, okay? So what do we do in that case? Well, we can add more seams to occupy my more space. So just add another one right there, right mouse, mark seam, A, U, and wrap. And then we're going to end up with two of these islands, and you can see that they are getting bigger and bigger. All right, so that is something you can keep in mind, pretty much. Now... Um, let's just straighten this up again, right? I'm just going to press 1, do the same thing we did before, GY, um, sorry, GX there, GY there, GY, and GX, and then press L, and hover over the other one, and press L again, and then select the one we straighten up, I believe it was this one, right mouse, follow active quads, beautiful, now this one doesn't do it, because we need an active quad in here as well, so let's do the same thing, GY, GX, GX, and GY, and then press L and select that last quad and follow active quads, right? So then we can just scale this so we fill as much as possible from our little surface. There we go, this one as well. Scale it up just a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. Now, whenever we're going to do texturing, whenever we're going to do manual texturing, it doesn't really matter where our seams are. All right, so this is where a seam is right now. Um, and we're not really going to see that seam because we unwrapped our mesh before we're going to do the hand painting. Now, if you have a texture that you're going to map to your UV map, and that texture is not made for that UV map, then you're going to see those seams because they don't really know how to connect the texture at that point. But in this case, it doesn't really matter how many of those UV islands we have because the texturing will just take care of those beautiful overlaps. All right, All right so, so I'm, I'm quickly, quickly going, going over uh, the rest of the UV unwrap, unwrap method. method. So press U, and we, and can, we can see we got, got a few more. more. And, and if you hover over, over those, it will give you a little bit of information of what they do. Now, the, now, the main, main ones I use is unwrap, smart UV project, cube projection, and project from view. Now, the unwrap one does what it says. It's going to try to unwrap your geometry um, in how many, how many islands, islands you have pretty, pretty much defined, defined with your seams, seams right? right? Which, Which means, means that, that if we have no seams, seams like the start is going to unwrap it as one mesh, mesh. If, it if it can. It, it will not always work. work. Now, if, now, if you add seams, seams it, will it will unwrap based on these seams. seams. If you, if you press U and you go for the smart UV project, project it will unwrap with um, a specified angle, right? right? Where it's going to split up, split up your mesh, which means you don't need seams, but it can be a bit less controlled. Um, and light, light map pack, pack is, going is going to pack, pack your UVs into, into UV, UV bounds, bounds right? right? Um, which, um, which can be a little bit dirty, dirty I guess, but it's, um, I guess, I guess it's, it's the most efficient in terms of using all, all the space of your UV bounds. bounds. Um, um, active quads, quads is going to just try to run based, based on your loops. loops. Um, cube projection is really nice. Um, um, you can see it checks the UV vertices of the mesh over the six phases of a cube. Right? right? So it's going to see a cube and it's going to try to project the, the closest faces onto those parts of the cube, which, which can be a very quick and dirty way of texturing, I suppose. I use it a lot for background, background objects, right? right? Because, because every part of the mesh will look kind of proper, I would say. Um, um, but but the, the, the overlaps, the seams, stuff, stuff like that, that it will not always work, work perfectly, perfectly, okay? okay? Um, um, but good, good to try and use for background, background objects that don't need to have those perfect, perfect seams. seams. 
I'm a cylinder projection, projection going to do the same, same thing, thing on a wall of a cylinder, cylinder right? So it's going to wrap that around the cylinder. cylinder. Yeah, so, so whenever you have something that is similar to a cylinder, the shape of the cylinder, cylinder, that, cylinder that will be nice, same, same for the cube and the sphere as well. It's, it's going to wrap that around a sphere. So if you have a spherical object or something with a nice curve, a sphere object could work quite well. And project from view, I love this one. Whenever you have a flat surface or whenever you want to Unwrap, unwrap for, for example, example a sticker or a texture, texture or, or like a small icon or something on your mesh, mesh on a specific location. location. Let's, Let's say you only want to project something right here on your, on your mesh. mesh. Um, you, you can, can just unwrap, unwrap this from view, view for example, example um, and project, project from view. view it's going to unwrap it based on your current view, right? right? Which means that if you have a texture right here in the middle, it will now also show on the back because those UVs overlap. It's, it's quite, quite dirty, dirty, but it, but it works, works very well and for, for flat surfaces and stuff, and stuff like, like that, right? Whenever, whenever you have a plane or something in 2D, you can just hover over NumPad 7, 7, for example, and you, um, you have this plane, plane and um, you can press tap, tap and, and if we if now, we now re 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 redo this mesh a little bit like that, that we, can we can press A, U and project from view and it will be exactly the same shape as you have in your, your current view. view. Okay. okay, very, very useful, useful, very, very nice. nice. Um, and then, then is there anything else we had? had? Um, let's see. I think, I think we had the, the bounce one. one. Um, I think it's just going to do the same thing, but actually snap, snap them to your bounce of your UV island. And Mark C. McClearsey, we already had those. those. Um, and one, one other thing, thing that I'll just show you is that you can have multiple UV maps, maps okay, okay, which is amazing. Um, um, so, so to do that, we can go to the data tab. tab. And we, and we can, can go, go to the UV maps, maps and we can just hit the plus, plus and it's going to copy and paste pretty much that first UV map into a new one. one. They will look exactly the same, but we, but we can now select the second one, one call this um, smart, smart UV, press, press U, U and smart UV project with the default angle. angle. I think it was 6.6. Six. Six. There, there we go. And now, and now you, you can see, see we have one UV map, map with the, the primary, the one we unwrapped before, before, and one with the new UV map. And, and this is just perfect, because, because now we can, for example, unwrap only the bottom. bottom. Let's, Let's say we want, want a beautiful, beautiful detailed, detailed texture on the bottom here. I can press L, U, unwrap, and we, and we got just that bottom covering one square. square right? right? So, so if, you, if, you if you have an image that's only going to be on the bottom, of our, of our cupcake, cupcake, we just use a separate UV map, map that has that entire bottom part to the, to the bounce of the UV square, which means we get as much resolution as possible, and we, and we can just link this UV map to that image texture, which, which is beautiful. And I'll, and I'll show, show you that as well in the next video. video. So, if so if you like, like this one, one please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I will enjoy any one of those, and then I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!